Hello, everybody. As you can see, things look a little bit different right now. This is the first episode in a series of videos where I'm going to be working on the May version of the Rodeo Day competition. We'll go into a little bit more detail later about what exactly that competition is. But for now, it's a fuzzing competition where we're trying to submit as many crashing inputs for files as possible. Now, you may be wondering, well, if it's the May version, why are we doing this in June? And the answer to that is the organizers have requested that I not publish any of the work I'm doing until after a round of competitions ended. That way, none of the other competitors can take a result and submit it as their own. Now, there's two different ways you could be watching this video. The first is using the Premiere feature. That's going to be very similar to the way the live stream normally work, where this gets published at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday, and everyone who watches it will see it at the same time, the same spot. So if you tune in exactly at 3 p.m., you'll see the start of the video, and you'd be watching me say this right now. But if you tune in at like 3.30 p.m., you'd be seeing what happens at the half hour mark. Now, once all of the premiere is finished, it turns into what's basically a normal stream recording, and you can watch it like a normal video. And for that reason, over on the left here, I'm going to have a couple bookmarks so you can jump to the parts that are particularly interesting to you. Now, we're going to start off the competition by looking at talking about what exactly is the Rodeo Day competition. After we do that, we're going to jump in, talk a little bit about the different applications how they work, what kind of inputs they expect. And finally, we're going to take the libjpeg from source that they provided, build that, and get it running in AFL. Once we have the initial instrumentation up and running, we're going to go out and find a corpus for it, so we have different input files to feed in. And then we're going to build a dictionary for it. This is a set of constants that AFL can feed into the fuzzed files to be a little bit more efficient in what exactly it's doing. Finally, we're going to use AFL cmin and AFL tmin to minimize the corpus and test cases, respectively. And finally, we're just going to get AFL up and running and get some test cases coming out and crashes happening. Now, we're going to jump back into the past from when I recorded this and get everything started so we can actually take a look at the work. But make sure to stick, stick around to the end where I'm going to be announcing a little bit of a competition and hopefully some interesting prizes for it. Hello, everybody. So we're getting another round of these recordings taken care of right now. Basically, what we're doing right now is I'm going to work on a competition. Uh, in particular, we're working on something called Rodeo Day. Uh, it's a competition run by... It's a group of mostly academics, plus, I guess, Lincoln Laboratories, which doesn't quite count as an academic, but they kind of are. They're, you know, I mean, they're associated directly with MIT, so kind of academic-y. Uh, but it's a competition that's run by this group of people. Uh, every month they run this. Uh, so they've got an archive here we can pull up. Uh, looks like it's been running, been running since July of last year, so almost a year. Uh, and essentially what they do is they give you an archive of some binaries and uh, programs. There's several programs that they have injected bugs into. Uh, I don't know if they tell you how they do. Uh, oh, they do tell you. In fact, they're using Lava for it. Uh, Lava is this um, large-scale automated vulnerability addition. There's a bunch of people who worked on it, but the basics of it, as far as I understand it, is they take a existing application that's at least supposedly relatively secure. Um, like their paper here, they used, I just saw it in here, uh, Core Utils, T Shark, Bash, like relatively real things that you wouldn't necessarily expect to just easily find tons of bugs in. But then what they do is they inject tons of bugs into it. Uh, someplace in the order of, it looks like it's been about 200-ish most of the times. And they put these out, and they end up with different teams or individuals uh, competing to try and see what tool chains work best. Or not necessarily best, but where do these different things stand? And one of the things that's 
particularly interesting about it, and I think is a lot of the reason why they're doing this, is they end up with different um, tool chains, and they get to stack them up. How exactly do these actually stand up against each other? So there's a couple different... Looks like most of them are actually based on AFL somehow. Uh, for a lot of these, they actually tell you how they work. Uh, that it's... In this case, it's affiliated with the University of Bonn. Um, I'm not exactly sure who they are, but I guess they're German. And they're using a modified, I would assume, custom-ish version of AFL. Uh, this group is uh, affiliated with the NEU Sec Lab, and they're doing unmodified AFL and unmodified QSIM and just shoving stuff into it and running with it. Like, most of these teams tell you, you know, basically what they're doing. It looks like the NEU Sec Lab is basically the primary group working on this. Uh, but there's also some individuals who jump in from time to time. Uh, you get a pseudonym when you register. I don't remember what mine is off the top of my head. We'll get into that later when hopefully I'm going to be submitting some stuff. Which brings us to what we're doing today. This is May 3rd? Uh, yeah, it's still May 3rd. Um, the competition's been running for a little bit, but I've been busy. So the plan is, we're going to get this up and running, we're going to start some fuzzing, and we're going to try and compete this time. The idea is that we're going to get everything running, hopefully I find a whole bunch of bugs throughout the thing, uh, and then over the course of May, I'm going to keep recording these. Now, I've talked to... Uh, Brendan a while back about this. Uh, he was one of the primary people, I think? He was a first author on the paper, at least, and he was really excited about this when it came out, so I assume he's one of the primary people involved with it, at least. Uh, and he said he was absolutely fine with uh, me recording it and doing things like that, but he didn't want me to release any of it until after the round had ended. Basically, he didn't want me to give teams an advantage because I assume they're using this data for some sort of research paper or something, and they didn't want to get it contaminated. They wanted to have real data to use for whatever their research is. In any case, what we're doing now is we're doing that research for them. I'm going to try and get uh, Toolchain up and running. We're going to try and find some bugs, and once... Uh, June 5th rolls around, uh, I'll be able to start releasing these videos out, and uh, hopefully it's interesting and useful to people. <laughs> Which brings us to what we're doing today. Uh, I can actually come over here on my to-do list and check these out. I can explain what we're doing. We're competing in this competition where we're going to try and find some bugs in... injected bugs in real applications. And the reason we're doing it is, for one, I haven't gotten a chance to do any fuzzing on stream in quite a while. And it's a really interesting topic because there's a lot of finesse to it and tweaking things and it's not necessarily entirely straightforward. So I'm looking forward to it. I also have a couple ideas for things that are hopefully going to be um, pretty cool to take a look at once we start getting some results. And we explained why this is going to be delayed. I've been asked to delay it essentially uh, because they want realistic data rather than, oh, here's some bugs I found just publicly out there. So, let's get started. So the first thing we have to do here is they have an archive. Uh, conveniently, well, they've actually had this whole API where you can get status information, you can get uh, the corpus of applications to go through. Uh, they also have this uh, process for you submit bugs over their API, as well as getting, so you... You basically take these applications, you find bugs in them somehow, and then you have to give them a crashing input in order for them to verify your bugs. Now, I don't fully know, like I haven't gone into their API a ton yet. Uh, that's going to be a future episode when I hopefully have some results to report on. But for now, let's grab this thing. I'm going to come over here to a VM I already have up and running. Uh, and I've already installed AFL in it. Uh, however, I learned something recently uh, while I was getting this set up real quick, which is now AFL is actually in the app repos. I can actually come in here real quick. Uh, 
was doing a little bit of research into it, uh, I was actually trying to figure out which version of Ubuntu I needed to run AFL, because I ran into this on stream a little while back that, uh, where'd you go to do list? That the 1804 will not compile Ubuntu anymore. There's, I don't remember what it is. There's something they're doing that the libc or something doesn't like and there's patches and stuff but it's a little complicated to get working if i remember correctly in any case we're going to i was able to just do a app to get install afl now and it just works as far as i can tell it's actually really convenient um but uh let's actually get this started so where are we here we need to make a directory. We're going to the rodeo. Let's grab that archive. Okay. So I will admit a little bit, I have looked at this very briefly before this. It's not completely new to me. Uh, and they actually have four applications this time. What's really interesting, at least to me about this, is three of them are binaries. So we have a SQLite binary, a file binary, and these are basically, if we come in here to, uh, oh, actually, if we take a look at the YAML file, thanks VM. So as you can tell, this is a brand new VM and I uh, don't necessarily have a ton of stuff installed on it yet. Actually, you know what, while we're at this, let's install screen, because we're gonna need that eventually. Like once we get AFL running, we want it running in screen so it keeps going for us rather than uh, sometimes uh, bailing out on us. Okay. Uh. So we can see here, so file, uh, this YAML file describes how it actually works. Uh, so we have file, we're gonna run bin file with these arguments, and uh, it tells us if we have source or not, which is useful because for the JPEG ones, so we have, sorry, we have SQLite here, which is a modified SQLite. We have file, which is a modified file, and we have JPEG one and JPEG two. JPEG one is a binary. JPEG two, they give us the source code for. And maybe it's a binary? <laughs> yes, they do give us the binary. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, now, one of the things that I think we're gonna do to make things at least a little bit straightforward, is we're going to use the source code to try and get a little bit of a jump start. And actually, before we do too much, well, this is a... Uh, I appreciate that they have apparently stripped out any comments and there's just lots of white space. Thanks. Um. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I don't actually know where this is going to end up, but, uh, so... Got some make here that we're gonna do. Hmm. So what we're gonna try and do here, uh, we've got our archive. And actually, oop. Um, let me explain a little bit of what's going on. And for AFL, it's actually gonna be a little bit more complicated. Okay, 
So we're going to need to build it from source, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, I want to get it building and then we'll make it build with AFL. Uh, we don't necessarily have to do it in that order. We could try and just get it building with AFL, but I kind of want it to... Um, that's what I'm looking for here. Take one step at a time. Let's get it building. Once I can build it, then we'll worry about um, getting it building with anything else. So, this is their make file. It's not super complicated. Does it just make? No. Um... So what we're doing here is, uh, if you remember that make file, and once this installs, I'll show you. Oh, the other one. Uh, it's doing a dash M32. Which tells us that we need the multi-libs. That just work? Let's try this again. Yeah, it looks like it works. That's uh easier than I would have expected. So, uh, where are we? So this make file is just doing the make of the other make file. Uh, and how is this actually working? So it's calling GCC directly. I assume we have AFL GCC? Yes, indeed. Okay. So we're doing this because it's specified, like it's hard coded to use GCC, although we can use the CC flags here. So, right, it's Apple CC. just works. <laughs> Let's see if this works. So, if this works, it's actually, it's in build. You okay? Um... I'm gonna edit this yellow file. Um, so we just pass in the file name. Inputs logo.jpg. Looks like it works. Uh, make dir o. So apple fuzz dash i inputs dash o o. Um, we have to give it a file name. 
assume it's yolo.jpg will work. Um, now we need to give it a thing to actually run. Oh, right, I'm gonna do this thing. I always forget we have to do that. Uh, we gotta set up this core pattern thing. Um, I don't remember what exactly it's doing. I know at some point I actually knew it. Um, Thing. <laughs> this is fast. So we're getting a thousand a second. Hmm. Well, we're new coverage. So that's good. We're just watching this for a second to make sure that it seems like it's running. Ooh, wow. It just found something big. That looks good to me. Um, now the next thing we need to do is we need to get a better test suite. Um, and so, what's a good tool for actually using JPEGs? So basically, if you notice, they had two input files, the logo.jpg and the rodeo.jpg. We actually want to get as many inputs to it as possible for different types of JPEGs to hopefully spread out all of the uh, starting inputs as quickly as possible. Because right now, we're kind of, um, like, we've got to discover everything as we go. What I want to do here is if I can find a good existing corpus of JPEG file, I'm going to feed that in instead. So I'm hoping for... libjpeg is, of course, the default, which is what we're using. Um... Good repo. I don't actually know. Um, okay. I'm hoping that I can find a good uh, source of crap. I'm trying to remember how to do this. So I'm using screen here and trying to remember how to change directories in screen. I'll live with it. Um, so what is this? I've got a couple here, but that doesn't really help us. Do I have no tests? Really what I want is I want a test suite for an existing tool. Hmm. Tell me 
tell me more. So Lib JPEG Turbo. at least something. Video JPEG has two inputs. Where are we at over here? Okay. We killed this because in the queue here we have all these files which in theory are getting us new places. I remember correctly that's how that works. Right? This crashes has nothing in it and hangs has nothing in it, right? Another try. Okay. Now that we have some new inputs, hopefully this helps a little bit. So notice what we did there is we took all the things in the in the AFL queue. Oh, actually. So give me a second here. We built from source, we built it from AFL. So we're still working on getting this starting corpus. We got this started. It's doing some work. Um, but we still have to get more work done here, right? Um, hmm. We're on faster too. That's interesting. Okay. Um, what was I saying? All right, so we've got all these. It's probably worth trying to find some more JPEG examples, but I'm not entirely sure how useful that's going to be. I think of what the best next ne next best step is. I think the crashes aren't just falling out is interesting. things I could do here right now, right? So we could just let this run overnight, come back tomorrow, see where we're at. Um, that may be the best option for my sleep schedule, but it's not necessarily the best option for finding bugs. Um, especially if there's something else we can do here to get things going a little bit faster.
Like, I'd feel a lot more comfortable if we found a bug first. Because if we find a bug, then I'm relatively confident that everything is working. Interesting. Running timeouts. It's a little bit surprising. Oops. Nope. Okay, they're not hangs hangs though. is to just let this run. There's the other thing too, right? So... What is it? It. Let's do this too because this is uh, from Brendan's previous research. Uh, it's probably useful to uh, do this too. So what are we doing here? Um, Nice if this has any input at all, I can see. we haven't done yet.
PayPal Seaman. Okay, AFL Seaman dash I is going to be O Q dash O inputs two. All right, I have to actually run this. Let's try this again. Okay. <laughs> something, it's out of line. I say it again, another time. I spoke freely when I was 17. I said the kind of things that no one was letting me. I pick you up, I pick you out of a crowd. How does it sound? Am I as loud as you want it now? I'll make you come up to my cloud. Best believe I'm not coming down. No, I am not coming down. What's the other thing? The team in. This is my chosen thing. I'd rather smoke something. I could probably blow a ring. I'm opening up as a singer. Nobody wants quality. They only want quantity. They they keep ignoring me. It's boring me. I want to be paid. I want double now. Or I will not tell you how to get to my fucking cloud. Because I am not coming down. So I need to do I do make imps.sh I never look this up. I didn't realize I could do it this easily. Okay, you know what? I should do this first the right way. AFL Tvin. Dash I. jpeg source source jpeg yellow three dot jpeg okay it looks like that's pretty straightforward So for f in inputs two slash star do afl t 
Teeman. AFL Teeman. Dash I F. Sorry, inputs two slash F dash O inputs three slash F dash F YOLO three dot JPEG source source JPEG YOLO three dot JPEG. Then I'm done. Then I'm done. but it'll work. <clears throat> okay. here, right, is we're taking the existing corpus and we're making each of the files as small as possible. And the reason we're doing that is because the theory at least is that the smaller the file is, the less processing the application does. And as long as we make it smaller without changing the code coverage, what we're basically probably doing is removing chunks. So if you think about like most image formats, you'll have different chunks. So you might have one chunk that renders good way to explain this. Wait, so think about a GIF, right? An animated GIF. You have multiple frames and each frame is going to have different data in it. So you'll have, you don't, for most things, you don't need a bunch of frames. You might just need one to trigger the code path. So by removing all the extra frames, you're able to um, hopefully be much faster in processing. So we're doing here so we're going through we're minimizing all these files with the theory that doing this is going to give us the smallest inputs and the smallest inputs are going to be the fastest to process that's not necessarily true but i think it's pretty close to true most of the time at least Reason we're killing this is because it doesn't these should be enough for us to do this um, right we don't need to go through all of those Because one of the reasons it was struggling there is because it's taking each of... So it took these files and then tried to find... fuzz them to get new coverage. But after it's done that, 
we just had a ton of these files that had found new coverage based on a larger version. So we're actually just repeating processing here. So what I'm hoping is that I can take this, those initial handful of files, pass them through Tmin, minimize each of these. What we're going to end up with then is the smallest version of this to start with. But we'll see. What we'll see when we start this up is actually a very quick jump in coverage because we're going to start with that initial inputs but if you remember went from the like eight we started with to 450 very quickly Okay, you know what, while this is all running... It's 175,000 lines.
hands are beating Sometimes I think that I can feel it It keeps my time And every night when I'm dreaming Feels like I'm falling through the ceiling No, I don't Just falling apart The king's horses and men Couldn't mend what is left Of my broken heart And now I finally realize It's what keeps me in line No, I don't mind No, I don't mind In case you're curious, yes, I am still sitting along just with all of you. If you're actually still watching this, while we wait for this to finish, before we jump into doing something with this.
So how did he actually say to use these? Okay. Ooh, we got a real hang? Interesting these are taking so long to run. Okay, well, I'm just gonna keep letting this run. as soon as I say something. Okay, so this time we want this to be inputs three and we're gonna do a dash X test cases. Oh. Smaller did we actually make these? We made it a little bit smaller, but like some of these made it quite a bit smaller. Looks like a lot of them we trimmed off a few bytes. Let's see if there's anything else on here.
actually gonna try this. Supposedly these are already relatively small. Okay. That got slow fast. Think here. So we have this up and running at this point. This may be a pretty reasonable place to kind of call it a day for right now and just let this go. Um, let it fuzz for a while, see if anything comes out of it. That's like a reasonable idea for me. Like, we're clearly coming up with the new stuff. We're getting new branches. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is pretty reasonable. Let's let this run overnight. Possibly all weekend. Um, I think the next step, uh, we have this running, is we're going to steal this. So basically, I want to get their setup at least kind of working. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get QSIM up and running. So if I understand QSIM, um, it's basically a... Um, <sighs> symbolic execution solver for um, st 
stuff. Man, I've been tired, so I think this is definitely a good place to stop. Um, basically, get this up and running, give it a try, see if we get anything new, and hopefully that'll help a little bit, but we'll see. Um, like, getting it up and running will hopefully at least get us something. Yeah, I'm definitely getting pretty tired. So I think we're gonna let this run, and um, hopefully when I come back in a day or two, uh, this right here will be up. Uh, hopefully this number will be like 100, but we'll see what happens. So um, I guess thank you everybody for tuning in, uh, even though you won't actually be tuning into this for at least a month, but uh, hopefully this is entertaining and useful. Um, so yeah, like I said, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, hopefully this is useful and entertaining uh, information. I'm hoping that we're going to have some interesting results here soon. Uh, oh. uh, once we do, there's a few more things we need to do. Uh, so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to get some sort of a solver running to expand this a little bit. We also have three of those binaries. And right now I haven't decided yet how we're going to tackle that. Uh, it's quite possible the approach is going to be we're just going to run AFLQMU and see where that gets us. But we're going to have to think about that for a little bit. Uh, for now, I'm mostly going to focus on this one we have source for because it's going to be the easiest for us. The other thing I want to do tomorrow, uh, and because time is weird because of recordings and stuff, uh, tomorrow I actually want to make a display for this so that we can have this streaming without get the outputs streaming and hopefully have that somewhat cool to watch um but that's going to be that's going to go live well before this video goes live so time's weird hopefully you understand what i mean but i don't know in any case thanks everybody for tuning in and i will see you all sometime later bye well that was fun as we'll see in the future episode, I'm actually totally wrong about the AFL on Ubuntu 18.04 thing. I remembered while I was doing the recording that it didn't work for some reason on 18.04, but I didn't remember exactly why. As we'll see in a future episode, when I try and run the AFL QMU stuff, it's actually QMU building that doesn't work on Ubuntu 18.04, and there's a whole series of problems I run into trying to get it to run, and we'll see that later. In any case, we made some good progress here. We got the fuzzing set up on the source code version of libjpeg, and as you'll see in the next episode, we actually get crashes pretty quickly with what we have set up. Now, on to the other thing that I teased a little bit, a competition. As you'll see in the comments down below, there's a link to a GitHub repo where I've posted all of the crashes that I got as part of the competition. Now, when you're doing fuzzing for real, one of the hardest things to do is take a whole bunch of crashes that may or may not be exploitable, do triaging of them, and determine which ones you want to actually try and exploit. Now, I'm going to turn them all over to the community to see what different people can come up with in terms of triaging them and actually exploiting them. In addition to that, I have three copies of the Hacking 2.0 Humble eBook Bundle that'll be giving away to people who do write-ups or video recordings of their experience trying to triage these crashes and hopefully getting working exploits out of them. And as always, if you've got any questions or comments, please let me know, either here in the comments section or over on Twitter, whichever one's gonna be easier for you. Bye.